This is the first lesson of crystal component training. And in this lesson, we're going to learn how to capture a crystal report using an order acknowledgement. So let's get started. I've created a new project called Crystal Component Training, and I'm logged into Database 10 as a WISIS developer. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, capture a crystal report. So from the component list, we're going to select Crystal Report, and we're going to call this Lesson 1, and we're going to actually do an acknowledgement. So this would be Acknowledgement Crystal Report, and this is how to capture We could be putting this on the menu. So we have Crystal Report icon as an option. Here we have no real changes other than I'm going to make this administrator, this administrator project. Next screen is the icon to capture the Crystal Report. So I have a Program Files Voices Report and Agility. Um, order acknowledgement report. And now that I've captured it, we could actually edit it right from here. Now, as soon as I've done that, I've really captured that report into SQL Server. So when I edit it, we're going to export that report temporarily into a workspace. So actually the same path that was on the capture list. And now we can edit it. Now a couple things. Let's look at the database location. Of drivers that I use here. We kind of go back and forth on these drivers, but we have both the main report and we have several sub reports. So we've set drivers on each one. I've used the ODBC RDO driver with the driver equals SQL Server, database 10, and it's best to set the server equal to a real name. You could use uh, local, uh, local host can cause some problems, just best to use your own name. We're going to reset the server and the database based on that driver for both the main report and for and as many sub-reports that are out there based on whatever database you're logged into it in Agility. So we take care of all the security, all the connections once you capture a crystal report, which is a great benefit. Uh, you don't need a crystal development environment to run crystal 10 and 11, 12 reports. We can run anywhere from an 8.5 to a Crystal 12 report. Um, and we could run any mixture of those. Uh, so it doesn't, we, we, the driver just detects it and runs it. Now another really important set of uh, points here is beyond the report is the parameter fields. It's the parameter fields are going to get passed. But, so we're going to, in Agility, we're going to set the connections for the report, the security for the connections to the report, and in a minute you'll see we're going to walk through and we're going to read and set the parameters with the user interface. The parameters drive the report options. So I have order here, and the order is a range. It's a string and it's a range. So keep that in mind. These other three are all the same. They're all just plain booleans. So we have a range and we have booleans. All three of these are booleans. So they were all used to drive the report. The order number is passed in as one of the parameters and then the other booleans drive some of the report options. So we would capture the report, make sure it fits that criteria. And you can uh, actually, if you want, you can export this report. Let's say you're on a different computer and you want to put it in a different place. You can actually export this report. The nice thing about that is this report is saved inside 
SQL Server and the Agility databases. So you don't have to worry about who has which version and which rev, or even if only one person can edit this report. Anybody after this reports in the system can re-export it to another location, edit it, just as I did here, and then hit, hit the refresh and then bring that version of the report back in again. So it's a really a complete uh, crystal management editing capture system. Now these parameters actually all came in here as uh, just because I captured the report. These are the same ones that you saw in the report. I didn't have to do anything else, they just show up. If I were to add one more parameter to that report and refresh it, then it would appear at the bottom. And you could keep adding and, and editing the report. So remember the first order is a range. And now remember with order numbers, even here, um, it's, it's a McCullough order number, which means it has to be managed specially. And that even if it goes to crystal, it still has to be padded out for you. If you define it as an order number, we take care of all that for you. You don't have to do anything special. So uh, I need to look up a search, add a search to this. And that's this order number search here we've seen used before. And print company name is a checkbox, and it's boolean, and it's a bit. So these have all defaulted for you. And we're saying it's true and false. All I have to do is put in the caption. Which I'll do. And then we got print unpicked items. And I'm doing that because I might want to do an acknowledgement um, either before or after we run a pick ticket. Some processes happen very fast. And whether I want to include customers on credit hold. Now at this point we would like I'd like to do a filter preview just to make sure that everything fits. And we have range values up here, but we don't have a header for this, so I'm gonna change that. And on filter group, I like to put all checkboxes into the preferences area. I just think it looks nicer. It's just a nice touch of filters. You're adding a user a user filter to a crystal report so that people are going to have a much more elegant interface. Now, see, I didn't put order into range, which would have put it at the top. So I put this range criteria. There we go. So now we have the range criteria of lookup fields at the top, and we have the preference checkboxes at the bottom. And we have a nice interface to our crystal report. And we can do a lookup on these order numbers. And you've got a very quick interface. And you can see that's the end of the things to do. So we've captured the report. We've already got the fields looked up here at 490 that I just did. I can come up again in the preview mode. And we want to check these boxes off. We'd like the company name on there. And there's order acknowledgement for order number 490. We've guaranteed that it was logged into company 10 and all the security privileges were passed through it. If I were to uh, import this project into company XYZ uh, and another server somewhere, it wouldn't matter. This report would be set to run and run automatically without ever touching the report. And that's the end of the Crystal Report Capture lesson. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video tutorial, and I encourage you to move on to the next video tutorial in this series.